Hello and welcome to DUI's banner review and first impressions video for October 2023 Legend Gala. With the Halloween characters exiting the banner, we get a small break from the seasonal banners, although not very long. Hopefully, you guys were able to get all the Halloween units you wanted. I'm changing up the format a little bit for this video, so let me know if you have any feedback. Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into the new stuff. First up, we have Baya Sevilbara, a unit who was featured in the most recent story event. Did you guys like the sequel, by the way? I've been told that they did a pretty decent job. Anyways, Sevilbara is an attacker focused on providing charge attack buffs and also dealing a lot of charge attack damage himself. Let's go over the buffs that only affect him first. His skill 1 provides himself with some pretty hefty buffs. The charge attack related bonuses and the skill nuke on the charge attack are all very welcome additions. The 100% defense will provide the character with a fair amount of effective HP, making him decently robust which is quite nice to have. This skill's cooldown is 8 turns, but once he's level 55, it will reduce to 7 turns, and it has a duration of 5 turns. Normally this would mean that this skill has a bit of downtime, but with Sevilbara's second passive, it will be reduced every time the party does a chain burst of 4 or more. I'm not sure if Fire is able to loop chain bursts, sort of like how Earth does, but if it is possible, Sevilbara would definitely be nice to have in those kinds of lineups. His skill 2 has two components, one for himself and another for the team. It provides himself with 100% charge bar and CA reactivation. This 100% will be boosted by charge bar gain up buffs, such as those from his first skill and also from most notably Kengo's CCW unsigned Kaneshige with the emblem of devilry. Charge bar gain stacks additively, so with these two sources, this skill will provide 160% charge bar. Normally, that extra 60% would be wasted, but of course, Sevilbara has a 200% charge bar limit. The second part of the skill is the CA specs it provides. I would have liked for this skill to have been a one turn duration as opposed to one time. Not even including other party members that might charge attack more than once per turn, Sevilbara himself will always charge attack at least twice when you use this skill, so missing the buff on the second charge attack onwards feels a little bit worse. It also will not stack with other one time buffs from skills like Yukata Silver's S2 or Kengo's 5 plus chain burst bonus. Only the highest value will take effect. That being said, it is still a welcome team buff to have on a character like this. His third skill provides some utility in a dispel and also provides a 10% uplift effect for 3 turns to the party. This skill and his first passive also gives a bonus to allies who are proficient in katanas. Both of these provide nice effects to katana allies with the passive being a more significant 10% perpetuity attack modifier. Although this isn't a make or break situation for these abilities, it is a nice bonus for katana characters. Finally, his second passive provides a scaling attack and defense and multi-attack buff, depending on the number of chains you perform. It is worded as a special buff, so it should stack with other buffs that provide a similar effect. And as mentioned previously, it will cut his cooldowns by one turn every time your team does a chain burst of 4 or higher. Several Bara is looking to be an okay addition to certain charge attack based teams. He has clear synergies with other units that also want to chain burst a lot, such as Yukata Silva, Samamirin, and of course, Kengo. If you're also one of the rare people who have Higurashi, it will be easier to get the full benefit out of his chain burst passives due to the first weapon skill the weapon possesses. On to the second unit of the banner, Utsusei, a brand new character that we've never seen before, which is pretty cool. Utsusemi is an offensive unit focused on buffing and dealing high normal attack damage. Let's go through her skill 1 first. Her skill 1 provides a one-time break assassin buff to herself and also inflicts onslaught, which means that the foe will be considered to be in break. This assassin buff has an extremely high 300% modifier, so it should be relatively easy to cap your damage as well. The Onslaught debuff will always land on the foe as long as they can be debuffed in the first place. So for most raids it will land, but for certain fights like Bedeal it will miss. The skill provides various benefits on the second and third cast. Both effects are significant, but for what I think will be her main use, I'm not sure it will be too relevant. I'll get into it more later. Utsusemi's skill 2 provides a 30% normal attack 
multi-attack buff, alongside dodge rate, and most significantly, 20% echo. The duration of this skill will pretty much always be 5 turns, as even in full auto it will be cast after her S1, which inflicts break and both skills share the same cooldown. The echo from this skill is A-sided, so it won't stack with characters like Fairy, Palamel, and Flare Tater, but it will stack with most notably Nehan and Mugen. Her skill 3 provides her with a dispel and an auto nuke as it will activate after her normal attacks if it falls in break, which again is inflicted by her first skill. Otosemi's first passive increases her hostility and in exchange boosts her dodge rate. Upon dodging, she will deal another auto nuke, which can lower the enemy's accuracy. This hostility boost will mean that in a normal party, Otosemi will have a 40% chance of being targeted. Her second passive rounds out her kit by providing her with guaranteed triple attacks on the turns that do matter, and also allows her skills to not remove her one-time assassin buff. Otosemi has an incredibly cohesive kit. She clearly has a place for shorter burst rotations, for things like NM95, and perhaps even PBHL rotations. At the moment, it looks like you want to be using her alongside Nehan and Mugen. The final slot here is usually reserved for characters like Fairy or John. Compared with those two, Otsusemi will be clicking more buttons but also bring higher personal damage. We will have to see if it ends up reducing time or meeting certain damage thresholds. Outside of these sorts of rotations, however, I'm not sure if she'll get much use. She probably will be good for optimized FAs, but for harder guild board difficulties or HL content, it is very unlikely that she will be used in those scenarios. Finally, we have Noir, a new wind summon. Just in case you don't know, this summon is subtixable just like Hecate. You will be able to ticket her in the future. Let's go over her call first. The call provides 10% normal attack damage amplification, which is upgraded to 30% when uncapped fully. Buffs of this type are extremely good, as they provide a consistent damage increase. This buff also does seem to stack with character skills that provide a similar bonus, such as Neo's S3. This call is outstanding. For the current Wind Burst teams, which are completely focused around dealing high normal attack damage with the units like Naru and Vampy, it is an incredibly welcome addition. The biggest difficulty will be finding room for the summon. For reference, here were my summons for NM150 and NM200 this year. At the moment, the only spot for Noir would be over Ilya in the NM150 grid, and for NM200, you could bring Noir over Hamza if you're using Wind Catherine, or over Ilya again. Basically, summons are really cramped, so we're going to need to get creative if we want to utilize her call. But that being said, she also provides a sub aura if she's uncapped. It provides MC with triple attack and 50% bonus wind damage one time. This effect does not activate on turn 1, and the first time it will occur is on turn 4. For NM150 and easier difficulties, this turn delay makes the sub aura meaningless. However, for NM200, it will definitely be very helpful. Here's what I ran for NM200 this year, which, as far as I know, was the best solo setup. This particular rotation was 7 turns long, which would mean that we would see 2 activations of Noir's sub aura. Assuming a similar rotation next year, which is a big assumption by the way, but extra damage from call and sub aura will very likely play a role in optimizing setups. Finally, also on radar, we have Poseidon. Poseidon is a versatile unit who is used in a variety of different situations. He's used for normal attack EX plus OTKs with his flurry passive, He's used fairly often in full auto, and he is also used in certain endgame raids, most notably at the moment, Hexachromatic Hierarch, where his S3 debuff resistance and his high damage nukes are coming in really handy. Poseidon is a unit who will definitely see use in this month's Guild War. He will be part of fairly optimized OTKs and will also very likely see use in certain Kengo teams and also full auto setups. His weapon Atlantis is... Um, it's okay, I suppose. It can be nice having one of these uncapped, but it is by no means a priority. I think I've had exactly one situation in the past where I thought, hey, I want this weapon for my grid. Take it from me, I think it's fair to say that I'm decently invested in water, and I have not barred this weapon, and I have no plans to. So yeah, it's an okay weapon, but don't go barring or sparking multiple copies of it. So, with all the information out of the way, should you spark? No, I don't recommend it. 
Although this banner does have some rate-ups on some good items, everything new here is sub -tixable. And with Xmas banners and New Year's right around the corner, it is really hard to justify pulling on this banner. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully you found my insight helpful. Please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content or come by the Twitch stream. These days I'm busy farming Hexachromatic Hierarch, so chances are you'll see me farming that raid. I dropped a wind guide for that just yesterday, so check that out as well if you want. That's it from me now. Good luck if you're pulling, stay strong if you're saving, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.